Hi everyone, welcome. The system that we've got out here on the bench, ready to get fed with a assortment of yummy foods, is the ANCs, the African Nightcrawlers, which, uh, as you can see, they were started on Leap Day, on the 29th of February, 72 days ago. That's the age of this bin now. And, you know, we could call this the Leap Year, Leap Day system. We can call this the African Nightcrawler population that was the survivors out of a major crash and burn of the majority of the population. Um, 748 worms are thought to occupy this thing so we can even treat it as maybe a kind of a restart small population type bin. I'm trying to think of what can we do to you know set this system apart from its kind of sad story in terms of it being survivors, um, in terms of you know limited novel novelty and the fact that it's a leap day <laughs> system but it might not be a bad idea for a branding but i thought it would be fun to revive a little something we've done here a few times which is composting cotton and i've got a couple towels here one of the towels has been used numerous times so some people might recognize the color and the pattern so yeah i don't really break these old towels out very often but i had already started into uh crafting a piece of material that we can include with today's feeding so that we can start a uh, nice new cotton composting test this time with towels again so you know what let me get this set up taken care of get a glove on and we'll get to work to feeding these guys so the piece of cotton towel that we crafted for this thing is about the same width as the material below it it's a little bit long so I think we can kind of even use it as a top cover if we put a little fold in it or something once in a while. You know, that's kind of the way I end up usually um, composting those towels is that they end up sort of as top coverings. I'm wondering if perhaps we should deviate from that and instead try to, you know, do things that will help the, um, the cotton get a lot more attention than just sitting out on the surface. Perhaps always trying to include it down in the feeding zone to see how quickly one of these things can break down instead of trying to, um, you know, elongate the amount of time the experiment goes. There's a good number of springtails in this system, as you can see. <laughs> Sometimes I've even thought about just kind of um, taking a piece of paper like this, covered in springtails, moving it out of the bin over onto the top covering plastic and that piece of paper will dry and then the all the springtails on that piece of dried paper would uh, pretty much stop moving after a little while if you know what I mean so I uh, I've sometimes thought about leaving these things uncovered and leaving the covering up of the system as homework for myself to do after the um, top coverings have had a chance to dry and then get you know put back on I don't know. So I definitely noticed a, a, a little flying insect, like a gnat or a um, fruit fly or something like that. So before we disrupt anything, I'm going to assume that if there are others, they're near the surface. Fruit flies, gnats, they don't strike me as the type of uh, creature that would burrow down deep into the material. I do have one system in which I feel like I've got a, a little bit of an outbreak going on, or I had one. I don't know. It's, hopefully it's getting resolved. And the way I'm trying to resolve that is by using this Mosquito Dunks solution, spraying it in to where I believe that the um, flying insects might be, in the hopes that I hit some of them, or all of them would be best. Man, there's a good bit of moisture in here. Perhaps a towel is exactly what the doctor ordered, suck up some of this moisture. Because, you know, it's not going to get dampened. I'm just going to be putting that towel in here dry. However, in the beginning, I did sort of think that using it as a top covering would be a good inaugural, inaugural kind of kickoff um, deployment method. And then perhaps just later on bring in the, uh, the idea I mentioned a moment ago, which is to try to do things that would help speed the composting of the cotton along, like submerging it with the feedings or whatever we think of to help, you know, promote that kind of activity. So uh, that's kind of where I think we're going to go with this. 
So I did a little aeration and tilling up of the material on that side over there. You might have noticed the coffee filter we removed with all those springtails on it was resting right over where we last fed. That was our feeding zone indicator. I figured maybe we would save the um, check in on the feeding zone indicator. I mean, uh, on the feeding zone, check in on the feeding zone um, for last. So, oops, guess what? I just ejected a little wormy <laughs> off the. Uh, out of the out of the bin with my rough behavior here sorry buddy a little bit of a wild ride wild ride there for you so uh, this stuff definitely has a good bit of moisture you know 72 day old bin moist is good I think but I'm wondering if perhaps being super generous with bedding today would be a good idea too I did set a number of different things aside. I got my box of leaves here. I've got some uh, an old piece of newspaper. I got some soiled paper towels, napkins. I do have a variety of things here, and we could either pick and choose, or we can just grab all of it and throw it all in here with the feeding. Might not be a bad idea. So now we got this whole mini banana <laughs> that went in last time, and I couldn't remember if it had been pierced in any way if the skin had been breached. I mean, I could definitely feel banana guts inside this skin. So, I mean, I'm not sure if guts is the right word, but that to me looks like an opening right there. So I don't want to tear the thing open. I'm curious to see what happens if we just kind of don't mess with it, you know? So let's leave it just like that and we'll put it back into the feeding zone undisturbed if possible. Here's a banana peel that had no guts. <laughs> I'm sure there's a proper word for the part of the banana that we eat separate from its peel but for whatever reason its real name ain't coming to me right now I can see all kinds of things in here this to me looked like orange orange peel at least orange banana good uh, selection of fruits in here and I do like to open up a system like this where I know that I uh, kind of started out with a a recovering population possibly a meager small sized population but when I look through what's going on down in this feeding zone and I see all the wormies in here I am starting to question whether maybe we're uh, starting to see a little bit of a bounce back which I think is expected you know considering the um, the sordid past that this poor system has had so I'm not trying to turn my back to the system's past but thought it would just be um, better to have something kind of fun and interesting and new and different. So that's why I want to get this towel test started. So what do we do? I mean, keeping it for the top um, covering in the beginning and then proceeding to using it as feeding, I think that's a good idea. You know why? Because I've got um, all kinds of stuff here that I'd like to compost away, such as this piece of newspaper. There was... Um, a number of pieces of soiled paper towel, napkin, whatever these things are. So now I thought that these bits and pieces of bedding type materials could actually uh, get inserted between layers of stuff. So why don't we start into getting the old stuff back in here and putting that little mini banana right in the center. And then I'm sure there were other things that we sort of blew right past here. This looks like peels of apple or pear. And I believe that that's more of what we've got on the menu here today as well as some other stuff. A couple frozen fruits. But, you know, before we drop those in, let's include more bedding. Stick into that idea of, hey, let's be generous. And then uh, perhaps it's time to start in with the yummy stuff. Here's some more citrus for them. And you know, part of our tradition here is to usually use a new coffee filter, like this one here, as the replacement for the old, and then taking the old one and using it as bedding down here in the feeding zone. In this case, I'm definitely liking the idea of just leaving that thing out there on the plastic to dry, <laughs> instead of bringing all those springtails back. You know, this top covering too, I mean, What's of more value to me is fewer springtails or this much more bedding in the feeding zone. I think we could live without it, and I'm going to let that piece dry too. 
I don't know. I'm getting a little tired of all the springtails. A lot of people criticize me for, oh, what's your problem with the springtails? I'm exaggerating. So, I mean, I, I don't think that tone is there. It's just, you know, questions because some people, I think, like having them around. Some people, I think, even breed them so they can feed them to pets and stuff like that. But, you know, I'm trying to run a warm bin here. I'm not interested in springtails. All right, I think we got ourselves a nice feeding. Let's get it covered up. But before we do that, I wanted to sprinkle in a little bit of pulverized eggshell right there. I've got a little bit of leafy matter here, too, that we can include as bonus bedding. And right now I'm running a little bit um, low on my worm chow supply. Because typically in the past, we would typically, uh, you know, dress up an application of coffee like this with a little bit of worm chow, too. But I think the leaves resting right beneath it are already a nice upgrade so let's proceed we can uh i don't know try to think of what to do with that um feeding zone indicator you know a lot of times when i do something like this i ex exclude a piece of top covering or feeding zone indicator or something like that that i know has springtails on it that i'd rather just see it dry sometimes i um you know, I just use that piece of material later in a different worm bin feeding later to, uh, you know, use it as bedding and not even return it to the system that it came from. And then it even comes with a little bit of a uh, bonus deceased insect carcasses on it for added protein. <laughs> so let's finish this thing off. This is the, um, the main event. I like the colors. Very patriotic looking, right? We've got pretty good coverage here. The plastic will come back on, so don't worry about that. Things will stay nice and moist down in here. And like I said, we're not we'll not be coming back with the uh, with the feeding zone indicator. We've got a nice replacement for that in here. So I got my homework. Other than that, I think we're done here. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. That's very much appreciated as well. All right, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye now.